Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Last night we finally got our big announcement from AMD on the Polaris and Zen architectures that I have been anticipating here for quite a while. And we got confirmation that they are targeting the more affordable VR market, which I have speculated to here on the channel. We've talked about this quite a bit that these new cards really weren't going to be going after like the latest Pascal cards or the Fury and Fury X. It wasn't really looking to dethrone those cards from AMD. For that, we're going to have to wait for Vega. But we got some info from Raja last night during the event at Computex on the RX 480, which is featuring the Polaris 10 GPU, which is on the 14 nanometer FinFET process. So that's the the newest that's the newest architecture here. They're still well, they're still using G, GCN here on the new process here at 14 nanometers. So that's really the big gains we're going to be seeing here is them uh, doing the new process here. There's not really any massive changes to the GCN architecture where most of the gains we're going to see here are likely going to be from that process shrink there. So they are talking about greater than five teraflops of compute performance, which if you're keeping math is more than a 980 or 970, but it doesn't take down like the Fury and Fury X cards. Like I said, we're still gonna have to wait for Vega for that, but this is coming in at $199, so I still think this card is going to be insanely competitive, and I cannot wait to see what kind of performance we can actually pull out of this card once we have the full specs as well. We still don't know things like, you know, the core clock, the ROPs on this, the TMUs, we still don't know that information. We do know that it has a 256 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth, which is effectively the same as a GTX 1070, so we'll see how much that's able to help the RX 480 and things like VR performance, which is one of the big things they are tackling here with this card is they're, you know, really going after power efficiency, uh, you know, performance per watt, and also trying to have a affordable GPU for VR. And I think that's a really, really interesting place for them to be going at with this card. And I think it's a smart place for them to be going at. They're not trying to go head to head with NVIDIA's, you know, latest Pascal cards. And I think that there is essentially a bigger market here for them to be going after at the $200 price point and I think AMD knows that looking here on the steam hardware and software surveys for the video cards that um, people are owning the majority you could see here is the GTX 970 at 4% ownership here of total steam users but once we get below that 970 here you know we start to see like the 960 Intel graphics 4000 750 Ti 760 you know this like affordable market here these are like all like sub $300 GPUs until we get down to, you know, like the GTX 980, which is quite far down the list at lower than 1%. So from here all the way up to the 960, you know, these are like sub $300 GPUs and each at a minimum of 1% of the market with a maximum of 2.31% here. So this gigantic chunk right here of Steam users makes up for about 30% of the user base on Steam, which are running graphics cards at under $300. So I think AMD knows that and that's the type of group that they're actually targeting here with this card, which is incredibly smart for them to be going after that than rather competing with something like, uh, you know, like a Titan X or something like that, which is if you try to search on li this list, by the way, spoiler alert, there isn't a single Titan on the list of the most owned GPUs on Steam. Like it's, it's such a small microcosm of people that are actually running ridiculous cards like that and, you know, the GTX 1080 that I just bought. So I think AMD, AMD knows this and that's the market they're going after. Very smart by them in my personal opinion. Now we did also get a tease for the new AMD Zen chip and we got to see an early engineering sample. Unfortunately, we didn't get much more than that except we do know that it's going to be eight cores and 16 threads and it's going to be on the AM4 architecture, which we already knew and they are targeting at at least a 40 percent ipc gain so that's instructions per clock they're targeting at least a 40 percent gain there which would be massive especially if they can keep this thing competitive at like you know like under like around 300 or less an eight core cpu for around that price would be absolutely insane and i really hope that amd can do that here with this summit ridge, ridge architecture i mean i literally just got the uh the i7 6800k but if zen was here today i would definitely go out and pick up zen but, you know, for now, I'm going to be doing a new build with the uh, new Broadwell E architecture, so that should be fun. But I'm still excited for Zen to come out. I cannot wait for this to come out and do, you know, like a build, like maybe with like two 480s in it and a Zen and a Zen GPU. You know, they were saying yesterday um, when they did this announcement that two 480s combined, which if you're doing the math at $199 each would be about $400. They said that that was beating a GTX 1080 in Ashes of the Singularity. Um, there was some, you know, just 
discrepancies there, though, with the benchmark they were running, pointed out by WCCF Tech, that if you look at here at the comparison, it looks like the, the graphics on the GTX 1080 version were running it a little bit higher detail compared to the RX 480. You can see some more um, terrain detail and deformations there um, running on the NVIDIA card. So I don't know if uh, AMD was running at a lower spec to make the, it look like their cards were performing better. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time that something like this has happened. AMD is kind of notorious for, you know, a little bit overhyping their stuff and then under-delivering. So we'll have to wait and see. NVIDIA's done the same. I'm not saying it's it's not just one side or the other. NVIDIA and AMD have both been guilty of kind of overhyping their their tech when they announce it at events like this. So we'll have to wait and see once we see the actual numbers and we know the core clock and everything on the RX 480. And we have, you know, way more details as far as the Zen CPUs are concerned and pricing for that and everything before we can make a final determination and, and all that. But a lot of good information here to discuss down in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing what your guys' opinions are here on the announcement for the RX 480 at $199 and with the upcoming Zen CPUs uh, being that we just got the Broadwell E announcement. So... Uh, interesting to see. I'm going to want to see your guys' comments. That's it. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here now. Thanks for watching and all that good stuff. Sources and links are in the description below. And I'm a rambling fool. Tara. When the stars are spelling, spelling your name And the night is brighter than daylight They know that something, something awaits Let your body, body flow Listen to the river, it's better than radio You won't fall, even when you're up high Growing up can be so hard, hard, hard It's gonna be alright